Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hello, my name is Tim, alcoholic, and uh, my sobriety date is May 30th, 2004, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Tara and the Equipod Committee for the good job that you guys have done and for the honor and privilege to be asked to uh, participate in this panel. Um, when I got the call and they asked uh, if I'd be willing to speak on a panel, he just kind of started going through a list of things that... He wondered if I'd be qualified for, and I had big, grand ideas in my mind, and then he mentioned anonymity panel, and I said that didn't sound very grand to me, but it gives me an opportunity to get outside of myself a little bit and uh, and dig into uh, something that's really important to the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, so I was thinking about today, and I, I sat down last night, and I did some, I took some notes, so I'll, I'll be mostly going off the notes that I wrote. Uh, most of my thoughts... Now and AA aren't really original anyway. Um, I had to go to the I had to go to the literature um, to to get a true understanding of of anonymity and the traditions. Um, I think if if there's probably one message that is really important to convey ab- about this topic is it's a really great opportunity to study the twelve traditions. Um, I, I looked at all twelve and I think there was more than half of them that that could apply to anonymity in the di- digital age. Um, I first wanted to qualify by saying that uh, I don't want to come off as like an internet teetotaler because uh, if there's a way to break anonymity on the internet or skirt the line in any way, I've done it. You know, I go on social media and I'll celebrate my birthday because I want to get acknowledgement and I'll put a number up there and all my AA friends will comment on the, the post that I've made and congratulations and thankfully nobody's gone on there and said thank God for AA for everything that you that's that that it's given you you know because that for me would be crossing crossing some line of uh, breaking anonymity and putting myself before putting the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I've also taken pictures at conferences, gone to conferences like this, and been in the main meeting room and all you know I see a big group of people. Uh, that look excited and I want a good memory, so I'll take a picture and that's kind of skirting the line for me as well. Um, and our home group, my home group, which is really hardcore on the lit- on the literature and traditions and steps, we have our own uh, social media page, our own secret social media page that wasn't approved by any group conscience. One of our group members decided that it would be something good for our group and they just kind of went and did it. So, you know... I get, I have the privilege of serving as a DCM in, uh, in my district down in Tucson, uh, which has given me the privilege to go to, uh, to PRASA, the Pacific Regional AA Service Assembly, uh, for the last two years. And this topic is, has been something that's been really, um, uh, relevant. The last two PRASAs, it's been something that a lot of people are talking about. Uh, being that we're at a young people's conference, um, this is something that I think for most of us, because this is our time, this is this is our these, this is the way that we grew up and the way that we're continuing to grow up. When we think about digital technology, we just kind of roll with it. But there's a there's an older generation of AA people who have been around years who didn't grow up in the same time who are feel I think they feel threatened and they're worried and there's fear that digital technology once it enters AA or when the two uh, collide with one another that there's going to be a uh, destruction of the program or something like that, you know? And, and I hear a lot of that fear when I go to, like, the process and I go to some of the area assemblies. And and uh, the one thing that I've heard that I really agree with is that um, AA can't, can't push the digital technology and the digital age away. It's already here. It's already starting to make its way into Alcoholics Anonymous. We have to learn as a fellowship how to uh, embrace it how to find uh, how it fits into our, our program and in, into our traditions because, you know, we're all self-promoters. You know, we're all power-hungry. We all want acknowledgement. And uh, and so some of us, and I saw it a lot the last couple of weeks. I was going on the, the social media page for this conference, and I'm looking at all these posts, and I was just like full of judgment. You know, I'm shaking my head. I'm like, wow, people are going to quit their jobs to go to Icky Park? <laughs> 
cool if that's your higher power and your decision. Um, but I still have a job on Monday when I get home. Uh, and uh, Dr. Bob talks about there's two ways to break anonymity. One of that is through the most obvious in the traditions, through press, radio, and films. The other way to break anonymity is to be too anonymous that the sick drunks can't find us. If, we, if we're we too anonymous and we're, we're this secret society that the outside world knows absolutely nothing about, then the newcomers, the, the fresh blood of our program, can't find us. So that really applies to the digital age because, you know, people our age and, uh, and people all over the world, you know, really are... We're, we're, we're so ingrained in technology now. We, we do the email, we do the text messaging. Um, I think I read an article the other day that land lines, uh, land phone lines in the U.S. are starting to, the phone companies are actually starting to not even repair the phone lines. So we all know that in no time there's not even going to be land lines anymore. Um, so how do we, as a society who needs to remain anonymous, uh, how do we embrace the digital technology so that we're not too anonymous for the newcomers. And for me, the word that kept coming was balance, you know, that I think as uh, sick alcoholics, we're, we're, we're one extreme or the other. It's like, we're going to have di digital technology or we're not going to have it. But we really have to find that balance, you know, that, that we can use digital technology, we can use it as a spiritual tool, and, uh, and, it, and it's good for, for, the, for a way to carry the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. But if I do it in a way that... I'm putting myself uh, and my own self-interest above the, the, the uh, preservation and the safety and the spiritual principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. I might want to question whether what, I, what my actions are, you know. And, and I just, when I was writing all these notes, I really had more questions than I had anything else. Um, that's what came to me is like, really what we should be doing our, um, with this kind of a topic is asking ourselves really important questions and say, hey, are we are we following these these kind of guidelines, you know? And uh, so, in tradition twelve, uh, in the in the twelve and twelve, it talks about. There's a quote that says, "Spiritual substance of anonymity is sacrifice." And uh, so that's kind of what I was just talking about. That that self preservation is is not as important as giving up, sacrificing myself, so that AA can survive, right? Because that's really what the traditions are about. It's to protect. Alcoholics Anonymous from the individual alcoholic who's self-promoting and uh, aggrandizing. Um, in the foreword to the fourth edition, which many of us um, have used to get sober, that's the book that I use to go through the steps. In the foreword it says, um, talking about taking advantage of technology, not running from it, you know. So all the, all throughout the literature that I was studying, it, it, it tells us that... Um, Kind of like, if we run from it, we're, we're really just living in fear. Um, in AA Comes of Age, uh, Appendix B, there's a quote in there. Uh, it says, Gradually we saw that the unity, the effectiveness, and even the survival of AA always would depend upon our continued willingness to give up our personal ambitions and desires for the common society and welfare. Just as sacrifice meant survival for the individual, so did sacrifice mean unity and survival for the group and AA's entire fellowship. AA is a power greater than any of us. It must go on living or else uncounted thousands of our kind will surely die. This we know. So the questions that I came up with, you know, do we use digital technology as a means to cooperate with professionals or to do public information work? Um, are we using digital technology to be more effective with corrections work, with treatment, special needs, or accessibility? Um, AA World Services Incorporated, the, arm, the one of the two entities that oversees um, the GSO and the, the website and a lot of the 12-step work that, that AA does on an international level, um, they're, they're the ones that we can direct how digital technology and Alcoholics Anonymous come together, how our society and, and digital technology interacts. And having gone to PRASA, having gone to the Pacific Regional Forum and, and doing the assemblies here in Arizona, what I'm seeing is we're in the time now where that is already happening, 
where we're trying to see how we're, we, we, the two things are, are coming together. And what we're lacking is a lot of, of knowledge, a lot of experience, a lot of, there's a lot of individual AA members out there. And I would say that many of them are probably in our age group. You know, I'm 33. And, uh, I would say that people in our, in their 20s and 30s, like, most of us are pretty well versed on how to use digital technology or, or how to get around it more than the older generations might be. And, uh, and so we should be the ones who should be stepping up to the plate to help Alcoholics Anonymous figure out how, how the two worlds are going to come together. You know, this is truly our responsibility. We can't leave this up to somebody else. You know, so I try and do my own little, you know, my own little parts. One of the things that I could think of is, uh, you know, AA's made the big book available as an app, right? You can get the app on the iPhone only, not through the Android network, right? So uh, I go to my home group, and we have two times a month we have a big book reading, and, uh, you know, you look up, and, and there's a lot of young people in my home group. You look up during the meeting, and more than 50% of the people are looking at their phones, right? As where before, people would have had their books, brought them to the group. And so uh, I go around, and I start asking people, you know, hey, can I see your phone that you're using? What kind of, where are you getting the big book at? And I'd say 80% of them are getting it from a source that is not Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and so what I try and do is just educate them on the spot. Did you know that there's an app available for iPhone, you know, if they have an, if they have that capability, that there's an app available and, uh, you, if by you purchasing that app, you're actually, um, being self-supporting, that money goes to, um, to GSO and to help fund more literature and 12 step work. As where if you're getting this other app from somewhere else, it's, uh, you know, Joe, Joe Society or whatever, right? So, those are the little things that I try and do. And, and another guy in my home group, I really like what he says about that kind of thing. Uh, you know, we we're talking one day about having phones and using them for the big book study. And, and he said, well, you can't give your phone to a newcomer, you know. So uh, I, I need to remember that. Like, yeah, digital technology is convenient. It, it allows me to be more effective sometimes. But if I'm in a meeting and my group doesn't have any big books and a, and a guy's truly willing and, and, he, and, he want, and he, we have the opportunity to give somebody a piece of our most um, important literature, you know, do I have a hard copy of, of, of AA big book around to give that guy, you know? So um, just really good things. I'm really, really glad that, I, that I've been exposed to this stuff. So um, in Tradition 11 and the 12 and 12, I'm just going to read another quote to you guys. Much of the political, economic, and religious life of the world is dependent upon publicized leadership. People who symbolize causes and ideas fill a deep human need. We of AA do not question that, but we do have to uh, soberly face the fact that being in the public eye is hazardous, especially for us. By temperament, nearly every one of us had been an impressionable or irrepressible promoter, and the prospect of a society composed uh, most, almost entirely of promoters was frightening. Considering this explosive factor, we knew we had to exercise self-restraint. And there, in there, it talked about something that, uh, at one time, uh, about a hundred members of AA, they they were they were already out there. This was before the traditions were uh, established in Alcoholics Anonymous, and they were out there, and they were in the media. They were taking pictures. They were having their names published in, in newspapers. And and so it, what it said about that, it says, with perfectly good intent, uh, these folks declared that the principle of anonymity was, was horse and buggy stuff, something appropriate to AA's pioneering days. They were sure that AA... Uh, could go faster and farther if it availed itself of modern publicity methods. You know, so this was, this was written in the 12 and 12 in the 1950s. And so the, the, the struggles that we're going through now is no different than what they went through then. You know, we don't have to recreate the wheel. Uh, we, all we need to do is go, go back and look at, you know, through time, through this, uh, what almost 80 years of Alcoholics Anonymous is, is this existence, um, what has the past generations done to um, get in line with present day technology, right? Um, because the world's moving faster, the world is, uh, you know, the world is busier, but our program depends upon the spiritual practice of one alcoholic sitting and talking with another alcoholic. 
You know, in the in that forward to the tw- uh, to the fourth edition, in, in the it talks about that. Uh, you know, AA's modem to modem or face to face, right? It says that uh, we can connect with alcoholics all over the world, and uh, so we, how how is it that we don't let technology get in the way of our most basic human uh, interactions? Because to me, my connection with you face to face. Is uh, is really valuable, and I, I wouldn't want any machine or any um, technology to get in the way of that, and, and 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 give me the ability to carry the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. Really glad to be able to get, be given the opportunity to do this. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Andrea. Oh. I'm Andrea. I'm an alcoholic. Thanks. Thanks. Love you too. You guys didn't do it. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm from Las Vegas. Um, my sobriety date is February 12th, 2008, and my home group is the How It Works group. Um, I want to like tell you guys all the dates and times we meet. No, but I, uh, I'm really, thank you for, um, asking me to speak. Um, it's really, really a huge honor. I've never been to Icky Paw before. Um, we had Wacky Paw in Las Vegas last year, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Last year. And I went to that. And, um, so it's just, it's, it's a really huge honor to, to do this for AA and for Icky Paw. Um, and I got a lot out of everything that you shared. Um, it was very informative. And I, too, like, you know, I was asked to talk about anonymity. And I was like, ugh. <laughs> um, and that's horrible. Once I, started, <laughs> once I started reading into it and, like, looking at the information, I was like, God, how important is this? Like, this is so, it's in the title and everything. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, and you know, I did the same thing. I actually had to take a good look at it and be like, well, what does that even mean? Like, what does anonymity mean to me? And what does it look like in my life? And like, really just like the first memories of anonymity is just like, kind of like not really being able to say the word. Like if somebody asks you to read the 12 traditions or when other people can't say the word and then people laugh at them. And so that's anonymity. Um, no, that's not what it means. So, and then the other thing, I guess I just went straight to like Facebook. Like I thought about Facebook and I'm like, what do I do on there? And, um, and I don't, I guess like my experience with Facebook, um, like I don't post stuff about AA and, um, and from just from talking to like other people, uh, people that have been in the program for a while, um, and another woman who's actually been on a panel like this before, too, I went to her, and I was like, what are the answers? <laughs> she's, you know, she kind of said the same thing. She's like, don't put stuff on Facebook. So basically, that was, like, my message. Like, don't, we'll, we'll die. Don't do it or we'll die. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's very personal, I think, too. It's like, I, you know, I had to ask myself, like, and in talking to my sponsor, it was just like, well you know, the motives, like, what are the motives? Like how you were saying, like, yeah, usually if I put something like, um, that just AA people would know about, or, you know, it's usually just to get attention. Like I just, I want attention. Um, I want approval. I want praise. I want all of that stuff. And like I was, that was one of the little things that I found in the 12 and 12 too. And it says this tradition is a constant practical reminder that personal ambition has no place in AA. And thank God, because I definitely am inclined to do that. Like, that is just, that is in my nature. Um, if I'm not, like, constantly checking myself, basically, or if I don't have, like, a higher power and a program in my life, like, I'm going to be trying to get ahead in some way or another. And um, and I'm just glad that, like, when I first got sober, um, before... 
you know, before this stuff could really sink in, like before I could even hear about the traditions or learn about the traditions, like I had a good sponsor. Like that's, I think that's why sponsor, sponsor, sponsorship is so important too. Like my, um, like we started talking about the principles like from the get go and, um, you know, even like honesty, like, uh, me and my sponsor talked about honesty a lot and, uh, I learned a lot from her in that area. Like she was really good at being honest and I, I was not good at being honest. Um, you know, I was constantly lying to myself. Um, I didn't really care, you know, not really other people so much, but, uh, that principle, um, really helped me a lot. So I kind of transferred it to the anonymity stuff. I was like, well, if I'm being honest and I'm going to be honest with myself and with everybody else, like, then I just tell everybody, like, I should tell everybody that I'm in AA and that I'm, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and that I have all these issues. And like, so, but really it's, and that's not right though. Like, um, I'm glad I didn't actually, like even my work people, um, my, I clean houses. So my, my boss directly knows that I'm in AA and that's actually like a good thing because, you know, she, she knows that meetings are important in my schedule and we kind of, we work around that stuff. And like, I go to like a detox center too. Like I, I take a, a meeting into there in Las Vegas. And, um, you know, especially when I was for like my first year or two, like we, she gave me the time off to go do that. So it was like, you know, she knew, she understood that it was important. And, um, but right now I, I clean a house and I work there like six days a week. And, um, it's one of the inter entertainers in Las Vegas and he on the strip and, uh, he doesn't know. I don't want him to know. <laughs> like, I thought it would be like a detriment. So I was like, he won't trust me. Like I have a key to his house. And so, but anyway, um, that's like an aside. Um, but in the meetings too, like there's another part when, you know, when I first was talking to my friends about it, she asked me what anonymity meant to me. And, um, and I kind of just thought, I thought about the principle behind it, um, for, as like humility and, um, and practicing these principles really work for an alcoholic like me. They help me stay sober. And it's not just something that I could say like, no, don't, don't tell people like you're an AA. It's just actually a, a principle that I could work on so that I just don't have to act out in those ways and, and bring a whole like organization down with me. Um, but like when I first came in uh, to AA, you know, I read this part before I went, went into meetings and it said job, jo job or no job, wife or no job or wife. We simply do not stop drinking so long as we place dependence upon other people ahead of dependence on God burn the idea into the consciousness of every man that he can get well regardless of anyone. The only, con the only condition is that he trusts in God and clean house. So to me, it's just like, I needed to hear that because I was afraid of the people in AA. I didn't know I was 23 years old when I got sober and I just didn't feel like I fit in. I was like, this is, um, it's going to be hard to fit in here. I'm not like a 50 year old male. Like that's what I thought. And, um, and so thankfully, like reading this and going into a group where I think they were also kind of, you know, it's a good group where they would practice the principles too. And they were talking about their own personal, like, gains. Like they weren't talking, talking about the specifics of their stories. And it was in a general way where they were talking about sobriety and how to stay sober. And I think like that whole thing about humility helped me. It like saved my life. Um, coming in AA, so I don't know. Facebook is bad. Don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't. He took all the things I wanted to say, so thanks. That's all I have. Our next speaker is Benjamin from Philadelphia. All right. Hi, uh, Benjamin, alcoholic. Thank you. I love you guys too. Um, so uh, a little bit about me. I um, 
you know, 15 years ago, I was a uh, homeless, junky, diseased, criminal, unemployable, no skill, no life skill disaster. Right? That was me in a nutshell. Um, I, uh, I, I have been sober and alcoholics anonymous since, uh, October of 1998. And, uh, today I, I own a house like, I have my own business and I love what I do for work. It's fantastic and fulfilling to me. I have a wife and we just had a baby girl who's like perfect and amazing. Um, and, uh, thank you. And, uh, I'll show you all pictures, but after, um, I, uh, the guys in my room know that's true. I've been forcing them to look. Uh, and, um, I, you know, and, and it's truly like my life is truly beyond my wildest dreams without a doubt. Uh, so that's a little about me. I qualify to be here. Um, anonymity is, uh, it's interesting, right? It's totally, like, it's in the title. That's, it, clearly it's important. Um, but it's also tricky. You know what happens? I've been coming to these conferences for 10 years, and something happens every time. It just happened to Joe and I by the pool. You know, a person who's not with the conference is like, hey, what are you guys all doing here? And And how do you answer that question exactly? Like, what do you say that's honest but doesn't immediately break 2,000 people's anonymity, um, you know? And, uh, you know, you could say, well, it's a, uh, it's a tattoo convention, um, or, you know, or whatever. And it's, hard, and it's weird because, like, every time it happens, I'm like, yeah, how do I answer that exactly? How do I, what do I say? And I say, well, like, uh, you know, it's, uh, I'm here with friends. You know, that's like, I try to keep it simple and not really get into it. Um, unless they really seem interested. And, you know, I don't even know if that's the right answer. I probably say something different every time. But um, so when I think about this, about anonymity, I didn't do a whole lot of research. Uh, I was never a good student in that way. Um, I just think, w what does anonymity mean to me, and what has it mean, you, meant, you know, in the time that I've been here? What was it like, and what happened? And so in the beginning, anonymity was just a word, like everything else, like the preamble, like the steps. It was just a word. It was just this thing. It was like, oh, yeah, anonymity, whatever. Um, and then at a point, I guess what it became for me was it became something that made me feel safe enough that I wasn't going to get arrested for any of the crimes I admitted to. <laughs> no, I, like for real, like sharing in meetings. Like I, like that's all it meant to me. And if you didn't seem like you were an alcoholic or if it was an open meeting or even like some, you know, group therapy and you were like the student who was there with the counselor, I was like, who the fuck are you? Like, what are you, like, are you bound by the anonymity thing too? You know, I, and that's all it meant to me. Um, and then I guess I, you know, as I evolved, uh, it, it, it meant some, you know, it started to mean more things to me. Uh, one of the most important of which was anonymity meant to me that we were all the same, regardless of who we were outside of these rooms. Uh, so all of a sudden, it, rather than anonymity being this personal thing, uh, and this sort of selfish thing that was all about me, it was like, wait a minute, you could be a doctor, or you could be like the homeless junkie, or you could be, you know, whatever, you could do anything. You could like, uh, you know, literally do anything, be anything outside of these rooms, but when we're in here, we're all the same. Uh, and that was far more important to me than what I had previously understood anonymity to mean, because it's what allowed me to connect with people. Uh, you know, and that, that new definition of anonymity is what allowed me to, to like get something from you or you or you or you, even though you might look different than me and sound different than me and I thought I was worse than everyone. Um, and then I found out I, I wasn't at all. And anonymity is what allowed that to happen for me. It's what allowed me to, you know, not compare my insides to your outsides and all of that other stuff. Um, and, you know, and I could like, I could continue to elaborate on that because it's, it, that was an amazing, ongoing realization for me that I continue to realize on a daily basis. Uh, then, you know, 10, 12 years later, I was like, oh, there are traditions. <laughs> you know, there's like all this other stuff. And, um, you know, and then I find out anonymity is even more. Uh, so anonymity in this sense, I think, uh, you know, at the level of press, radio, and film, and uh, anonymity, uh, it, you know, it says anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all of our traditions, not a foundation. It says it's the spiritual foundation. That is powerful. Uh, that those are powerful words. That means it is, it's the bedrock. It's the, 
that's, that's the thing on which everything else is built. And the traditions are here, as I understand it, to protect us as a group. You know, the traditions do for us as a, as a group what the steps do for me as an individual. And, um, so that makes anonymity now even more powerful, uh, than it did for my previous definition, right? And my new understanding then, it grows, it way beyond, wow, the other one was still just about me. And now this is about something else entirely. So then I realized that, you know, when it comes to press, radio, and film, uh, you know, which is mentioned in the traditions and in the, 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 you know, all the writing and everything, here we're talking about anonymity protecting AA from us. I mean, that's what we're talking. We're not talking about the original definition, like, like, oh, anonymity protects me. You can't go tell people what I said in here, even though, like, we all do it anyway, and then it never really matters. Um, but, you know, it's like, it's actually protecting AA from me so that I don't go out there and globally misrepresent in my very limited perspective and my very limited experience, my very limited understanding uh, what this is. Because this is so much bigger than I am and so much bigger than anything I could put into words that who would I be to think that I could do that, that I could, that I could go into this world and represent this program uh, on a on a larger scale, on anything other than one alcoholic talking to another alcoholic. Uh, so where that takes me in the digital age, and I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Facebook, I don't use any of it, uh, and I do, and I work in I work in film and television, and still I don't find it necessary to use any of that personally. Um, but where that that takes me is that all of those things, you know, the the internet is like that's bigger than any press, radio, or film. That is global, without a doubt. And when we put things there, the fact is we have no control over where they go from there. Uh, you know, nobody reads terms and conditions. I don't know if anyone saw the South Park episode about that, but it's disgusting. If you saw it, it's kind of awesome. Look it up. Um, but like, fa Facebook has the right to reproduce anything that you put there. They have the right to reproduce and sell it, videos, pictures, anything you put there. Um, so the fact is that when you, you know, when you put that information there in any way, it's, to me, it's, it's clearly like, it's, it's just a clearly breaking the traditions. I don't even think it's sort of, I, I, I totally agree that like we have to embrace technology, right? But, but on a personal level, that's just a, a, a basic breaking of a tradition. And if I break the tradition, I'm saying that I'm more important than AA. And AA is the thing that gave me the life that I have today, which means that what I want is more important than the little baby girl that I just had and my wife and the family and everything that I've worked for and everything that you guys are working for. And that's just like a crazy, that would be a crazy thing for me to think. Uh, and a crazy way for me to act. So I, you know, to me, there's no, uh, you know, when I break it down like that, and I'm sure that, you know, if I'm back on this panel, I spoke on a similar panel last year. If I'm asked to do it again next year, I'll probably have like a new definition to add to anonymity. But, um, you know, but, but the fact is, it's, it, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer, you know. Um, and I, I just, I feel like it's such an important thing that it's, I don't think it's something people can take lightly. Uh, but we do because. You know, on our phones, in text messages, in emails, on Facebook, online, things are not personal. And when you don't have to look at the people that you're talking to, it's easy to say things that aren't what you mean. And um, and I think that, uh, you know, you wouldn't leave your fifth step in a library, right? Like on the, or like at the doctor's office on the table where all the magazines are. Like you wouldn't do that. And when you put any of this stuff online, it's like you're essentially doing that. You're making it available in, in ways that you, the, you know, that are beyond what you could imagine. You have no idea where it goes. And then when it's other people too, it's like, it's crazy because then you're jeopardizing them and their lives. Uh, so that's all I got. Thanks guys. And our final speaker is Gina from Phoenix. My name is Gina. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I learned that yesterday. I am an icky paw virgin, so I get to experience virginity all over again. Um, 
I, I am, let me tell you. <laughs> um, I, too, had the same reaction. Okay, I got a text that said, hey, do you want to be part of the GLBTQ community and share on a panel? I'm like, sure, I'm a raging queer, of course I do. Right? I can talk about being queer and I can talk about being sober, right? And then I look at my topic, I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Seriously. Um, so I had to do some work, and, you know, to... I'm like, oh my God, traditions, right? They're just, they're not even, sometimes they're not even palatable. There's a meeting I go to that has a tradition on every third Tuesday. Something happens every third Tuesday, I don't show up. So, but I have learned a lot about the traditions from my forebearers because I have some really kind people in this program who taught them to me. In my home group, um, let me, I'll give you my little, I'll give you my data. I got sober on October 22nd, 1996. I have a sponsor who has a sponsor who has a sponsor. And I come from a long lineage of women who've been sober. My home group is a Friday morning big book meeting of Gloria Day. It's at uh, 32nd Street in Stanford, okay? For all my local residents. So I had to like, so like in November they do the traditions, so that's why I really learned the traditions. So, um, we bring out our little book, AA Comes of Age, and we all prompt in there, and we look like little students, and I learn the traditions. However, I learned a lot more about the traditions by breaking them. When you break a tradition, you absolutely know you've broken one, okay? Somebody will tell you <laughs> that you've broken that tradition. So I went and I did my homework, because I'm a little studious AA girl, so here you go. It's all on um, GSO, AA.org, and there's some things I didn't know. Okay, and so it just, you know, and I like AA's guidelines, right? So AA members sometimes contact GSO for suggestions on how to remain within the traditions on Facebook and other set social networking websites. Keep in mind that GSO staff members are not special workers of, or of the technological wizard varieties, but they can act as a resource regarding AA's 12 Traditions and the Shared Experience of the Fellowship in the U.S. and Canada, and how AA spiritual principles play out and new technologies need to be carefully discussed by each AA individual or entity yeah, creating an online presence. So, I, you know, it's like I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, you know, I didn't really talk to that guy who created Facebook about my anonymity, right? I didn't say, hey, I'm going to remain anonymous on Facebook. Hello, my name says Gina D'Angelo on my Facebook page, but it doesn't say that I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous, okay? And that's where I'm responsible. So I looked up some other stuff, because we have personal responsibility. So I'm looking up understanding AA or anonymity, because I don't understand that big word. I can barely say it sometimes, right? So <clears throat> there's a declaration of unity. I'm like, who knew that? I know I got the, you know, I am responsible, right? I know that one. But this we owe to AA's future, to place our common welfare first, right? To keep our fellowship united. For an AA unity depends our lives and the lives of those to come. So all those little baby gay alcoholics and all those little baby straight alcoholics that are coming up, right? We gotta love them. You know, and I gotta be there for all those little addicts. You know, that's my place. That's my responsibility. You know, to stay sober, to do the deal. And the deal's the 12 steps. And then there's some more deal called the 12 traditions which, you know, it took me a while to get. And so it says, each AA member, right, at a personal level, an anonymity provides protection for all members from identification. As alcoholics, a safeguard will often have special importance to newcomers, right? So I got, when I came in, I didn't use my last name. I could barely say my name. You know, I says, hello, I'm Gina. I'm a little alcoholic. I could barely, like, sit in my chair. So anonymity stresses the equality in the fellowship of all his members. By putting the brake on those who might otherwise exploit their AA affiliation to achieve recognition, power, or personal gain. So really what it's saying is, you know, Gina, check your fucking ego at the door. That's really what it's telling me. It's like, you know what? My, you know, my place in being anonymous is that I'm just one of many. One of many, and I got a story, and it's just like everybody else's. Because, you know, the terminal uniqueness, it still suffers between my ears. You know, that damn thing, it keeps coming back up to bite me. So it tells us, you know, in AA's guidelines, it says, you know, as long as individuals do not identify themselves as AA members, there is no conflict of interest. 
Right? However, someone using their full name and or likeness, such as a full-face photograph, would be contrary to the spirit of the 11th tradition, which states in long format that our names and pictures as AA members ought not be broadcast or filmed publicly. So as experience suggests, in keeping with the 11th tradition, you're just not to disclose that you're in an AA membership. But it also says that we shouldn't put AA jargon on, on their personal profiles and status updates. Right? So basically what it says for me, you know, one of the things I liked about, I was doing this little little quiz of myself. I got question and answers in this pamphlet, okay? So AA members may disclose their identity and speak as recovered alcoholics. You know, I have a great daily reprieve today because, you know, I went to my meeting, I tapped into God, God came in, I got some juice, you know, and as I'm good to roll. I'm going to be sober today, you know, because God graced me with another day of sobriety. So it is the AA members' responsibility and not that of the media to maintain our cherished tradition of anonymity, all right? So experience suggests that. And one of the ladies who asked me to speak on this panel, I always use my last name, and says, use last names within the fellowship. Because you know how many genas are out there, right? I'm just, I'm the gina with the, you know, white hair that looks like a dude sometimes. So I don't know. I'm that gina. But, you know, I'm Gina D'Angelo because there's a lot of genas in Phoenix. Who knew there'd be so many genas in recovery in Phoenix? But anyways, so it is our responsibility to use our uh, last names within the fellowship so that we know who we are amongst ourselves. I am, not an, I am not anonymous amongst you. This is the place where I'm at home. This is My anonymity belongs outside the doors, right? And it's up to me to decide whether or not I choose to let somebody know I'm in recovery or not. And I've also found out it is not my responsibility to disclose my partner's personal relationship within her own recovery program. Right? And that's where I find we've had a life-altering experience within my little family unit. And... I really, really get that it's to respect her anonymity about how she deals with this. It's going on with one of her children. It's not my place, you know. So I'm not only anonymous within the exterior of here, I'm also anonymous to the things that are told to me and to the values that my family holds together. And I think the bottom line is this. You know, when looking in the 12th edition, and if you can read it in, it comes into A comes of age, and I don't know it at all by heart, or not even close to by heart, but Bill Wilson wrote the 12th tradition to save AA from itself. That's huge. That's huge, because God is so much bigger than AA. God is so much bigger than this international community that we live in in the digital age. It's all about God doing for all of us what we couldn't do for ourselves, right? Because we don't even, you know, we're just anonymous in this thing. We're just, you know, I'm a mustard seed. That's the way I look at it. I'm just a little mustard seed among other little mustard seeds, and there's just thousands and billions of them, and millions of people have recovered as a result of being a mustard seed. So I think that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.